Hello and welcome everyone. In today's episode, we will dig deeper and understand what the thing build context is and we will understand what it actually means. So you may have seen the build method of either stateless widget or a stateful widget in Flutter takes a build context. And some other widgets like the media query dot of context, the navigator dot of context, and some other builder widgets like the list view builder, grid view builder, and other widgets needs that context. But what actually that build context is? Well, it represents the location of a widget in a widget tree. But what a widget is? A widget in simple words is an immutable description of a specific part of a user interface that how it is going to look like. The example of a widget is a text widget, a column, a container, and many other widgets. But there is a problem. A widget like the text widget in the widget tree does not know its position. A widget itself does not keep any information about itself and its relationships with other widgets in the widget tree and does not know where that specific instance is in the widget tree. But in Flutter, there is something more than just a widget tree. Flutter creates three parallel trees for rendering a widget on the UI. And the trees are widget tree, element tree, and render object tree. A widget in the widget tree is just the configuration. We define and configure the widget and nothing more. And an element in the element tree corresponding to each widget in the widget tree is responsible for managing the necessary updates and life cycle of a widget and also keep all of the information about a widget. And then this widget is painted on the UI using the render object of render object tree. As this is not the video of understanding the widget trees, so we will not spend so much time in here. If you want to learn more about the widget trees and want to know how actually Flutter works under the hood, I already have created a detailed video on this topic. So you will find the link in the video description and surely you can watch it in order to understand how Flutter works under the hood. So we got a widget tree, the configuration of a widget. We define declaratively a widget. An element tree, is responsible for managing the life cycle of a widget and keeps all of the information about the widget and then the render object tree the render object of that widget is responsible for the final painting of that widget on the ui so if you go to your code you will find so many stateless widget and stateful widgets and if you poke into their implementation you will find the stateless widget or the stateful widget are the implementation of a widget and you will find something important here, the create element. So as we discussed earlier, Flutter has something more than just a widget tree. In that parallel three trees, the element of that specific widget is responsible for the necessary updates and managing the life cycle of that widget. And also keep track of the widget in the widget tree that where that widget is located in that widget tree. And so what its parent and children are. So an element keep all of the information about a widget like that. So when we create a widget like a text widget, it asks the Flutter framework to create the element. As we have seen in the widget implementation, there were the method of create element. So when a widget is created, it asks the Flutter framework create an element for me. And then an element has all the information about the widget that it needs at runtime of that specific widget. And for each of the widgets in the widget tree, there are their corresponding elements created by the Flutter framework and are responsible for all the managing stuff like keeping track of where that widget is in the widget tree, the information about the widget, like what its parent and children are, and also is responsible for managing the life cycle and any necessary updates in that specific widget. So what that element actually is, if we again go to the code in the framework dot dot, we have seen the create framework method in here. And if you go to the stateless element implementation, here it's the implementation of the component element. And this component element is the implementation of the element. And that element is finally just the type of a build context. So next time when you see a build context, just remind yourself it's the context that let us know where our widget is located in the widget tree. 
and keeps all the information about that specific widget. So let's dive a little deeper and understand this build context more in depth. We have the first point. Each widget has its own build context, which becomes the parent of the widget that is returned by the build method. So let's understand this point from an example. We have this simple stateless widget, which has a build method. And again, it is checking the build context, which contains all the information about this my widget, stateless widget. And it is returning this container. And this container also has its own build context. So this container is returned by this my widget. So this my widget is the parent of this container and this container is the child of this my widget. And this container also has its own build context and has build method. So it's returning in the child the text. So this container is the parent of this text and this text is the child of this container. So in the code, if we go to the implementation of a container and search for build, we will see a build method with a build context and also some conditions in here. And also you will finally found here. It's returning the current widget. That is a widget that is the child for this. So here the child for this is a text. So container has its own build context and it got the text as its child. So it will become just like this. My widget container and the text. My widget is the parent of the container and the container is the parent of the text and their widget tree will be built something like this. My widget container and the text which clarifies that each widget has its own build method and the widget that is returned by this widget becomes the child of this widget and the widget that is returning it becomes the parent of this widget. And we have an next point that is the build context of a widget in the build method is not same as the build context of the widget returned by the build method. So these things lead us to some tricky cases. For example, let's again dive to the code. So I have a simple example in here. I have just copied this build method from the Flutter official documentation. And in this example, we have a scaffold, an app bar, a center, a button. A button is named button. And in the on press method, we are doing the scaffold dot of context. As we discussed in the starting, the media query dot of context, navigator of context are using the context of this build. So now this time the scaffold dot of context is using the build context dot show bottom model sheet. And here we got a message from the Flutter documentation. The scaffold dot of context return null. That is because the scaffold is returned by this home page. And this home page does not have any ancestor widget scaffold. So in the context of the build, we does not have any scaffold. So that is why it is going to return a null. So let's check it out. I have already the app is running. We got the button in the center. Click this and no bottom sheet will appear. That is because the home page does not have the scaffold as an ancestor. So let's check the run console. And here we got exception card by a gesture. The scaffold dot of card with the context that does not contain a scaffold. As I said, it does not have any ancestor scaffold widget so that we can use it from the context and display a bottom sheet on the scaffold. So to fix this Flutter itself, its official documentation says wrap your body of a scaffold with a builder. So what this builder does, it creates the new scope for this context. And then this builder has the ancestor widget of the scaffold. So now this context is passing in the scaffold dot of context. So now we have the scaffold as an ancestor. So now this will allow us to display the bottom sheet upon the scaffold because now we have an ancestor scaffold and this builder method is creating the new scope of the context. And we are using this new scope of the context which has the scaffold as an ancestor. So let's try it out. But before how to start your application after it how to start, let's go for this button. Now when we click this, a bottom sheet will appear. That is because now we have the scaffold ancestor 
and the builder method create the new scope of this context and now this context is used to show the bottom sheet on the scaffold so that is what i mean by the build context in the build method is not same as the build context in the widgets returned by the build method so next point about the build context we have is do not use strong instances of build context so it means the widgets in the widget tree does not stay the same as the user interact with the application the widgets can become unmounted along the time and their context can become invalid as the widget is no longer associated with the widget tree and this can lead us to some unexpected behavior of the application and some terrible build context errors therefore it's recommended to use the immediate context of an operation and avoid storing it for later use by doing so we are ensuring that we always have a valid build context which can save us from some terrible build context errors and unexpected behavior of the application and the last point about the build context is properly handle asynchronous gaps so let's also understand this from an example the example is if you're dealing with an asynchronous task like the http request or any other database operation that is the asynchronous so in that case you have to make sure you check the build context is alive then deal with this otherwise this can also cause some terrible errors of build context so that was all about the build context in Flutter. So if you want to learn more about this build context, head on over to flutter.dev where you will find the detailed documentation about the build context. You'll find the link in the video description. And also if you want to dive deep into Flutter and want to learn how Flutter works under the hood, I have already created the video on this topic. So surely you can check that out and can learn how flutter works under the hood and how things are actually rendered on the screen before ending the video let me tell you one more thing that follow it aquarel on instagram and linkedin where we on daily basis upload the informative content and you can learn so many things from this so again that was it for this episode and i will see you in the next video